Merry Christmas, everybody. This is First Horn Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich on this Christmas Eve 2012. It's about 3 o'clock at the time of this taping. I want to go over some weather information because we've got a lot going on on Christmas Day and the day after Christmas for many areas of the south, southeast, and even the Midwest. It's going to be a pretty active couple of days on the weather front. I wanted to start, though, with what's going on right now. In the Charlotte metro area, most of the Carolinas, we've got a very cold rain falling, some drizzling mist where it's not. Um, as you go north up to areas in the uh, basically the Washington, D.C. area, we're getting a little bit of a rain-snow mix with freezing rain in eastern parts of West Virginia and western Maryland. And up in Ohio, we're beginning to see a changeover to a little bit of snow. But this is not the big storm that we're worried about. This is just kind of a appetizer for what's yet to come. What's coming is out of the uh, out of the uh, southwest, the Four Corners region. It's going to move out into the plains. We're going to see a pretty good low pressure develop in the western Gulf and then track right up the spine of the Appalachian Mountains. And we've already got winter storm warnings up for parts of uh, Oklahoma. And eventually that snow swath is going to extend up into Ohio. But I want to focus on the severe weather threat because really that is the biggest concern in the next 24 hours. Let's start with what's going to happen on Christmas Day. You can see the severe weather threat across the South Dixie Alley. This could be a significant tornado outbreak if we get discrete cells. That means individual supercells that develop right now. Uh, that does look likely. The storms that do get going, there is so much wind shear that any depth of these storms, it's not going to take a lot of instability. Not your typical summer, spring, or even fall. This is a winter setup where you have loads of shear and limited cape or instability. And that's, it doesn't take much. You'll get a lot of rotation around here. Then the threat is going to shift to the Carolinas. This is where things become a little more problematic for forecasting because uh, it looks like we're going to be probably wedged in west of Interstate 77. doesn't mean we couldn't see some strong storms along Interstate 85, but this area in eastern North Carolina is an area we're going to have to watch. So this part in the eastern part of the state I'm a little worried about, and if you haven't been on my Facebook page today or Google Plus or followed me on Twitter, I put out this tornado risk uh, probabilities basically for Wednesday. I think from mid-morning to afternoon, this is what we're looking like. About a 2% chance of a tornado in and around I-85, Statesville, Lincolnton, Cleveland County, over towards Shelby, then Charlotte, then 5% when you get towards the Sand Hills, and about 10%. This may shift east or it may shift west. This is just kind of my preliminary thinking about what's going to happen right now. Let's see how this system unfolds. I'll show you the national view first. And the first thing you'll notice is down here, watch this area right in here. This is where our storm is going to develop. This is not our storm. This is actually what's happening today. Watch the storm just explode over the, uh, over the southern plains and the Gulf Coast. Look at the snow, heavy snow in North Texas, Oklahoma, moving into Arkansas, western Tennessee, then riding up the Ohio Valley. That's where the upper low is going to be. But there's going to be a surface low back here in the Carolinas, something we call triple point that may ride right up Interstate 85. Then on the back side, we're going to see quite a bit of mountain snow out of this system. I think maybe one to three inches, could be more depending on how long it persists. Let's go in even closer and show you a close-up view. Again, this is starting right now. This is not the storm uh, that's heading our way. This is the current storm. Watch what happens over Texas, Oklahoma, into Arkansas, northern Louisiana. This is Christmas Day. Uh, I'm going to stop it real quick here and go back a couple frames because something struck me right off the bat. You see the main squall line uh, back here in Illinois, or excuse me, uh, <laughs> Mississippi and Louisiana. But you can see out ahead of it this little warm frontal area. Uh, we'll have to watch this area for tornadoes. If we're going to see tornadoes, it's going to be along it. We could still see some along this line, but these would be the supercells right in there. Uh, on Christmas Day, and then it looks like a, a mesoscale convective system, some kind of linear system develops, and then it moves up into the Carolinas, and this is where things I get, I told you get kind of interesting, because in the mountains, it's going to be cold enough, this is going to be ice. Uh, we could see freezing rain, especially on the eastern facing slopes. We're going to have cold air trapped, we're going to have southeast winds, which means we're going to be lifting air, and that's actually going to cause it to cool. So I think we could see significant icing in the mountains, but look what happens across the Piedmont. We get a couple waves of really strong storms. Hard to say if this is heavy rain, bright banding. I, I don't think this is going to be severe. I think the severe threat is actually down here in the Midlands of South Carolina. And then things get interesting. This is by late in the afternoon on Thursday, excuse me, Wednesday, and then into the evening hours. And it looks more squall line-like instead of uh, individual supercells which would be a good thing. So let's go over a little bit closer view. This is from the NAM 4 model. This is uh, today's rain moving out pretty quickly. 
we go into Christmas Day, um, we're likely going to see a lot of drizzle. And eventually, as we go into the afternoon, we're going to see some rain movement. Now, this will not be severe here on Christmas Day. This is just some light rain. Here comes a severe threat early Wednesday morning. And this is where things, I think, get really interesting for what we're going to see. If you look closely, you can see the 32-degree isotherm. That's freezing rain right there, folks. Western Virginia, West Virginia. That would be ice. Um, the triple point to me is right in here and is tracking this way. I'd keep an eye on this area in particular for severe weather as we go through the day on Wednesday. And as we go out into the future, we'll go back a little bit here. We'll show you what that looks like again. Okay, this is Wednesday morning. Um, the only good news is we get a pretty squall, pretty good squall line here, but I don't see a lot of supercellular development on the NAM4, though there's going to be so much shear, it would take very, very little to get any of these storms. It actually looks really impressive right there. This looks like your broken line of supercells in western or eastern North Carolina. Um, so this is really the time frame from about 10 in the morning on Wednesday uh, until about late afternoon or evening. It moves pretty quickly, but that is that is the worrisome part right there. Now, what about Cape or Thunderstorm fuel? There's not a lot of it, but as I mentioned, you only need a couple hundred um, uh, Cape, you know, with joules per kilogram here to get things cranking up. And as we go into Wednesday morning, watch as the Cape, it's not a lot, builds up through uh, South Carolina, the Midlands, creeps up towards the upstate, gets right around the Charlotte area. Um, you're talking couple hundred to maybe four or five hundred down towards Florence, maybe a thousand near the coast, and then things crank up along the coast. So that's kind of my thinking right now. I, I will have to watch the track of the system overall. I mean, it does it does worry me a bit to see some of this model data start to come out when you see individual cells. But if it becomes a squall line, we're definitely looking at straight line wind threat. But right here, this is our future cast, our RPM model. Uh, this is about, you know, 11 a.m. tomorrow, or excuse me, on, on Wednesday, and the day after Christmas, and you see that right there. I mean, it doesn't look like supercells to me right now, even though the shear is off the charts. In fact, the shear is just ridiculous across parts of the Deep South. So this is your heads up. Uh, this is my tornado th threat. I'm going to stick with this for right now. Um, if you have travel plans anywhere in and around the Carolinas uh, over the next two days, Christmas and the day after Christmas, please stay abreast of the weather. We could see tornado watches or even tornado warnings. And don't let the temperature fool you. Even though it's cool out there, there's a chance that just a county away we could see a warm front surge north and, and give you some severe weather. So the threat is coming uh, across the deep south and then up into the Carolinas. And, of course, the big snow part of this I didn't talk much about. Big swath of snow from Oklahoma City to Cleveland up to Buffalo on the backside of this. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. I'll, I'll try to post updates throughout the next couple of days. Obviously, I'm off of work, but I'm still working from home. Um, and if anything should change, I will post it on my Facebook and Twitter account uh, and my Google Plus account. Make sure you're going to my page and not your news feed because, remember, only about 10% of my updates actually end up in your news feed. you got to go check them out or make sure you subscribe to my page or you add me to an interest. Hope you have a great Christmas Eve. And hopefully you won't hear from me again because that's good news, but I have a feeling you